Right, so on Thursday, like I said, we're going to have a test, and that test is going to include um, what's uh, listed there on the board. You'll have to classify matter. Is it a college, suspension, solution, solute, solvent, uh, element compound? You'll have to identify intensive versus extensive property. Uh, you'll have to identify is it a chemical <coughs> change or a physical change. Number four, chemical property or physical property. And then the last two, number five and six, we're going to cover today. Define specific heat, which you should have a little bit of familiarity from freshman year, and uh, calculate the final temperature of a system. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, like I said, uh, if you're gone, I upload these on YouTube so you can watch it. The homework is right there. Okay? Do tomorrow. Yep. Is this it's coming into the sheet we got a lot of the same stuff? Uh, we're gonna do some reviewing on Tuesday and Wednesday, but yeah, I would say it's like the sheet you got. Well, it's not gonna be matching, it'll be multiple choice. Okay. Oh. But I'm gonna give you another worksheet um, tomorrow. Okay. That'll be a lot like the a lot like the test, except I think the substances that you're gonna classify are a lot clearer. Because the worksheet is pretty good, but they give you a few weird substances yeah. to classify like um, things that you may, wouldn't be familiar with like India ink. Yeah, I don't think any of you, it's a colloid, but I mean, how would you know that? You know, so that's why when it comes to colloids, there's only four of them that are gonna be on the test. Jello, milk and water, clay and water, dust and air. Those are the four colloids that you are familiar with that I would expect you to, um, <coughs> be able to uh, classify. Uh, but the test will be multiple choice, some short answer, and then a couple math problems. It's actually fairly short. Um, so I'd say it's uh, one page both sides. Yeah, it's right. so. Any other questions about the test on Thursday? Are there going to be any like Uh, unit analysis? Yeah. Not specifically, no. But you know, we're going to use unit analysis the rest of the year. Yeah. Okay. So, any other questions? When do we get our labs back? Uh, I graded them. I got to put them in the computer. You'll get them back. You should get them back tomorrow. Now, probably not third and fourth and seventh hour. I'm still working my way through those, but I got first first hour now. You guys are lucky in that aspect. Alex? So what kind of problems are going to be on it again? Multiple choice, some short answer, and uh, like three math problems. Any others? All right, so um, let's take a, let's define specific heat. This is the last topic in uh, chapter three. <coughs> Those of you who like objectives, our objective today is to define specific heat and be able to calculate the final temperature of the system. Specific heat is the energy it takes to raise the temperature of a substance uh, to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance, sorry, of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. And this information is, is straight out of the book. So this is, you know, one of those situations where you could just read the book and teach it to yourself. Yep, Jerry. So is it like a calorie? 
Yes, um, you can, uh, well, not quite. Calorie is a measure of energy, but you can use specific heat to calculate calories. So uh, the specific heat of water, and this is the symbol for specific heat. Why don't we use S? Because S is sulfur and S is seconds. So C subscript P stands for specific heat. And the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram per degree Celsius. <coughs> and I should put this is for water. Because every substance has its own specific heat. Yep, Jerry. Isn't C what carbon? But C subscript P is not carbon. So that's why it's not just C. What's S subscript P? There is no S subscript P. So why IUPAC chose C, I can't tell you. Why did they pick S? I can't tell you. But, uh, it's C subscript P is the official symbol for specific heat, not S. Any other questions? IUPAC is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. They are the governing body that sets all the rules for chemistry. So when you become a super chemist, Brett, then you can join IUPAC. It's the coolest of the cool. Only the cool chemists are, are allowed in. So, All right. Um, so that specific heat. Now, what does that, what does that mean? So, uh, if I have one gram of water, and I add four point one eight four joules of energy. the temperature will go up by one degrees. So if I have one gram of water and I add 4.184 joules of energy to it, the temperature will go up by one degree Celsius. I start going too fast, just tell me to slow down because I'm kind of excited here, Mark. I want to get through all the stuff. It's great stuff. And sometimes I get so excited that I forget that uh, you're learning it for the first time. <clears throat> so um, if, if, I, if I have one gram of water at 20 degrees Celsius, and I add 4.184 joules, what's the final temp? 21. So I got one gram of water here, Chloe, at 20 degrees Celsius. I add that much energy. What's the final temp going to be? 21. 21. Okay, it went up by one. Now, what if my initial temperature was 35 degrees Celsius? And I add 4.184 joules. What's the final temperature going to be there, uh, Gruber? 36. So this number, the specific heat, is just the energy it takes to raise the temp by one degree. So what are the things that affect the temperature or the mass? A 
the mass has an effect, right? Wait, what's Q? We'll get to Q. So the mass has an effect, right? The more mass, the more energy it's going to take to raise the temperature. The amount of heat you add, and that's Q. heat, the mass, and then your final temperature, your initial temperature, and your specific heat. So all of these are combined into that equation. So the temperature change is going to depend on the heat you add, the mass, your specific heat, all combined into that equation. <clears throat> Another way you can write this is anytime you have a difference, anytime you have a difference, um, Joe, that's delta. So Q is equal to M delta T Cp. And delta T is always the final minus the initial. Okay? In science, if they say, well, take the delta, they mean take the difference, John. Okay? And it's always final minus initial. Always. Do not be led astray by others who say, well, sometimes it can be initial minus final. No, it can't. Okay? Do not listen to false prophets. It is always final, final minus initial. That's the official definition of delta, okay? Not initial minus final. So, <clears throat> heat is in joules. Mass must be in grams. Temperature must be in Celsius. And specific heat is always joules, well, I shouldn't say always, but in science, it's joules over grams degrees Celsius. If you are dealing with food science, you can work in calories. But in science, specific heat is in joules, because joules is the official measurement of energy. Wait, what is the initial T final? The temperature. I'm just saying they must be measured in Celsius. We're not going to use oh, the F okay. word in here. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fahrenheit. Yeah, I guess. Right? Don't use that word in here. Don't use any of those four letter words like yard, foot. Use five letter words meter, liter, gram. Mm -hmm. So, Mass in grams, Q in joules, temperature in Celsius, and specific heat is joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay. So let's start with an easy one, Anna. Let's do about, I'll just make one up. <clears throat> sort of. Okay, maybe I'm not going to make it. Number 43 at the end of the chapter. Um, if you want to follow along, you can, you can turn to it. Otherwise, I'll just uh, read it for you. Um, heated bricks or blocks of iron were long used ago to warm bread. Uh, warm bread. 
warm beds. Believe it or not, they'd have this big pan, they'd stick hot bricks in there, stick it in to your bed to warm it up so that in the winter time it wouldn't be all cold when you stepped into it. Or you could hire an official bed warmer, someone who would actually sit and lie in your bed and use their own body heat to warm it up. That was usually for the kings and queens, you know, the bed warmer. Your job, Ryan, would be just to hop in their bed, warm it up, and then hop out. That's amazing. That's yeah. awesome. I know. Um, so, uh, but you can use heated bricks or blocks of iron. And so it says uh, 1.49 kilogram block of iron heated to 155 Celsius. would release how much energy as it cooled to 22 degrees Celsius. So we have a 1.49 kilogram block of iron. It's heated to 155. How much energy would be released as it cooled to 22C? first thing you do is write the equation. Okay, that is worth one point. It is worth one point to identify the correct equation to use. Now, early in the year, we don't have many equations. This is the only one. But as the year goes on, you're going to get more and more and more and more and more equations. You can always look up an <coughs> equation. Okay, in science, you can look up equations. But you can't look up when to use it. Okay? You can have a toolbox full of wrenches, <coughs> um, channel lock wrench, pliers, needle nose pliers, um, hammer, claw hammer, tap hammer. You can have all these tools, but when do you use which one? Under what circumstances? The old, the old saying is the right tool for the right job. Same thing. You can look up equations, but when do you use the right equation? For which, for which problem? So one point to identify. Then what I want you to do is to write down all the information that you got. So do we know our mass? Yes. Yes, we do. 1.49 kilograms. Do we know our initial temperature. Yes, we do. 155 Celsius. Is it in Fahrenheit? No. Um, not in this class and not in this textbook, but sometimes they'll give you the temperature in Fahrenheit to trick you and then you've got to convert it to, to Celsius. But in this book, they never give it to you in Fahrenheit. And the same thing with my tests. It will always be in Celsius. But when you go to college, they might try to trick your breath by putting it in Fahrenheit. Okay. Do we know the final temperature? Yes. 22C. Do we know the amount of energy released? No. no. That's what we're trying to find. Do we know the specific heat of, are we dealing with water? Are we dealing with cadmium sulfide? No. We're dealing with iron. So we need to know the specific heat of <coughs> iron. Fe is iron. Where are we going to find it? Well, lucky for us, we have a packet of appendices. And you can look it up in appendix P1. And the specific heat of iron is 
So now we have all the information we need solid. Okay? So Q we're trying to find. Mass, uh oh. What's wrong with the mass? It's in kilograms. In kilograms. Sam, it must be in grams. Do not be fooled. Alright? So little unit analysis here. One kilogram is a thousand grams. So one thousand four hundred and ninety grams. T final minus T initial. So twenty-two Celsius minus one fifty-five Celsius. <coughs> times the specific heat, which is 0.4494 joules, grams, degrees Celsius. Of course, we put units on all of our numbers. To do otherwise would just be silly. Now, the first thing we do is our subtraction. Now you do the subtraction, you stop, then you do sig figs. So I'm going to do 22 minus 155 There's my guess, there's my guess. So my guess is in the ones place. So I'm going to round to the ones. not lose your negative sign. That's a place where people commonly make mistakes, Elizabeth. They lose that negative. Now I can plug it back into the equation. 1,490 grams times negative 133 Celsius times 0.4494 joules per gram degrees Celsius. So the grams will cancel with the grams. The Celsius cancels with the Celsius. Does anything cancel with the joules? No. no. What do we measure energy in? Joules. joules. Okay. So you always want to just kind of double check yourself. If your units don't cancel correctly, then you, need, then you know you did something wrong. If at the end of the problem, your mass is in Celsius, something's wrong. If at the end of the problem, your specific heat is grams, you know something is wrong. So now we can multiply. And then we apply sig figs. Three, three, four. So we'll round it to three sig figs. It becomes negative 89,100 joules released. Again, this negative sign is important. It means the energy is being released. Okay? It's like the difference between saying you're plus $100 versus minus $100. That's a big difference. Anytime it is negative, 
it means you are losing energy. Energy is being released. Okay? If it's positive, it means energy is being gained or absorbed. Yep, Jerry. Wait, so if you circle the negative 89,100 joules release, uh, wouldn't that be like 89,100 joules gained just because you used a negative with a negative, so to speak? No. No. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be written. So now, here's the thing about science. Don't ever accuse science people of being, you know, great writers. In this, negative 89,000 joules released means the same thing as this, 89,100 joules released. The released means you're losing it. And therefore, the sign in front of it should be negative. In some books, though, they will save the money and not print the ink and just write 89,100 released. They expect you to understand that there's actually a negative sign out there. Okay? Just, could you but you should put both. Okay. Put both to be clear. You know, to me, don't be explicit. You're losing 89,100 joules of energy. Let's say you forget to put release, so you have a negative. That's this is the important thing. Yeah, put that negative. Yeah. Put that negative. Okay. Um, but I like to um, reinforce it by writing the word released because sometimes people see, see negative as, as like it's being destroyed. Okay. You cannot destroy energy. If you have negative, it means it's just going someplace else. And I always use the analogy of, of money. So if I have a dollar and I am losing it, and I give it to Ryan, I'm negative one dollar, he's positive one dollar. So I'm negative, he's positive. Was the dollar destroyed? No. It just went someplace else. And now Ryan can give it to Amanda. And then he'd be negative a dollar, and Amanda would be positive a dollar. So it's the same thing with energy, okay? It's not like the energy was destroyed. It just went somewhere else. The bricks lost it, the bed gained it, okay? But you never, ever, ever destroy energy. It just flows from one place to another. And for those of you watching in TV land, I put a disclaimer on destroying energy. Yes, I know you can change it in matter, but we haven't gotten there yet. Okay, moving on. Uh, you always got to put a disclaimer whenever you say always, always, always. There's, a, there's very, very rarely is there always in science. science. There's always an exception and an exception to that exception. Okay. Um, now, here we solve for Q, <coughs> but we could have solved for mass, we could have solved for final temperature, we could have solved for initial, we could solve for any of those. So let's try a trickier one. So if 50 grams of iron at 115 degrees Celsius is dropped into 100 grams of water at 25 Celsius, what is our final temperature? So in the last problem, we had one substance, iron. In this problem, we have two substances, water and iron. Whenever you get stuck with a problem, draw yourself a picture. So I have a beaker. <coughs> And in that beaker, I have 100 grams of water. So my mass of water is 100 grams. Initial temperature of the water is 25 Celsius.
we are trying to find the final temperature and the specific heat of water we can look up. It is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. I got that from your book or your appendices. Yep, Peter. How do you know which uh, thing you're finding the final temperature for? It will be the same. So, mm -hmm. I've got this water. I drop my metal in. The metal is 50 grams. The initial temperature of the metal is 115 degrees Celsius. Now the final temperature Who is warmer in the problem, uh, Brendan? The metal or the water? The iron. The iron's hot, right. So if I drop this hot iron into cold water, what's going to happen to the temperature of the water? Yeah. It's going to go up. What's going to happen to the temperature of the hot iron? It's going to go down until they are equal. So the temperature of the water goes up, the temperature of the iron goes down until boom, they're the same. So the final temperature of the water is same as the final temperature of the iron. So there's only one final temperature. And the specific heat of iron we can get from our book 0.4494 joules per gram degrees Celsius. So the water is gaining heat. <coughs> the metal is losing heat. And that's the most important thing to solving this problem, Terry, is understanding that the metal is losing heat. So it's negative Q. It is losing. And the water is gaining, so it's positive Q. This is the stem, Victoria, that we will use to solve the problem. Once again, I think of it in terms of dollars. If I'm negative 20, Maggie is positive 20. My sign is negative, her sign is positive. But the number is equal, right? Negative 20, positive 20. So that's why these two things are equal, except that the metal is losing. The metal is negative. The hotter thing always loses heat. It's my lunch money. I need it back. Can't have it. OK. Now we're going to take our equation for um, previous problem. And we are going to expand it for each side. So negative Q of metal would be negative mass of metal, iron, minus final temperature, minus initial temperature of iron, times specific heat of iron. negative sign comes from there because the metal is losing the heat. <coughs> that will be equal to mass of water times final temperature of water minus the initial temperature of water times specific heat of water. So in our previous problem, 
we just had one substance, one equation, really. But here we have two substances. We have the Q on one side and the Q on the other side, which means we're going to have lots of fun with algebra. So this is where I said at the beginning of the year, we don't do really tough algebra, but the algebra that we do, we do use it. So um, let's plug in our numbers. Then we combine these numbers up front. <coughs> if you know your algebra, both of these get distributed through the parentheses. Not just the 100, both of them. To make it a little bit faster, I will combine these two. Do the same thing over here and be careful about losing that negative sign. You don't want to lose the negative. Then we will distribute and combine like terms. Now we're running out of time here, so I want to make sure that you know that this is your homework for tonight. This is your homework for tomorrow night. If you feel like you understand this problem well enough, go ahead and get those other ones done. But if you feel like you don't understand it well enough and you need a little bit more explanation, well, we are going to go through this. Now we distribute. So we get negative 22.47 TF. This, the negative times the negative, and that's another place where people will make mistakes. So at this point, don't worry about significant figures. We'll apply them at the end. It comes Combine like terms. So the negative 22.47 comes to this side, becomes a positive. Bring the 10,460 10, to the other side. Solve for TF. No, there's no zero there. There we go. Then I get 29.59, three significant figures, 29.6 degrees Celsius, temperature is in Celsius. So then we double check to make sure our answer makes sense. 
the temperature of the metal should have gone down. The initial was 115, now the final is 29. Did the temperature of the metal go down? Yes, it did. Check with the temperature of the water. The temperature of the water should have gone up. It started at 25, it finished at 29.6. Did it go up? Yes, it did. So we have done the problem correctly.